Hey there, welcome to our Seinfeld uh, show. I got Laura with me. Um, Craig's working today. Oh, rude. How did, yeah, how did he do that? Well, what, uh, Laura's working during the day too, but yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm at work, but yeah, yes. <laughs> Well, I'm like the non journalism snob where I'm like, how do people work the day before a holiday? Yeah. How do people work on the holiday now? But no, it feels weird. No, I was joking with the guy. I, I recorded a podcast right before this, and I felt kind of bad doing this because I'm not used to being off paid on yeah. days like today. So I'm like, I feel like I'm doing something wrong, like I'm playing hooky from work or something. But no, it's it's been good. Uh, Laura, do you have any big plans for Thanksgiving? We're recording this the day before Thanksgiving, in case you listen to this 10 years down the road. Um, I'm going over um, my aunt's house. Oh, okay. She lives uh, in Aurora. Oh, all right. Um, it's my, my dad's brother's wife. Um, my dad and her husband are both deceased, so... Okay. Uh, it's it'll be nice to see. Nice to see. Um, it's going to be a pretty limited crew, though. Oh, so, okay. Um, Do you have it at someone's house, or I'm going over my aunt's house. Yeah. Okay. In Aurora, she um, she they lived um in Aurora. My, I have three cousins from her, um, and well, her and her husband, <laughs> and uh. They went to Aurora High School and oh, uh, okay. And uh, one of my cousins still lives in Aurora. Um, and apparently, we're gonna we're supposed to be going over her house after this meal. Oh, wow! And wow. um, she has a pretty large family from her other from her husband's side, so I'm guessing that's why everybody's not getting together. Um, and so, but it'll be nice to see them, you know. I. I used to, um, I, we used to see each other a little more than we do now, you know, obviously. Um, COVID was, um, was yeah. horrible for my family because um, yeah. this aunt that I'm going to see has breast cancer. Ooh. And it's like, a, she's in this long-term study. Um, it's like a, like a five-year study. And she's taking this, taking some experimental drug, and I guess she's doing okay. I mean, she must be doing really well if we're going over her house. So, okay, hopefully but, she's doing okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I hope they're not like forcing her to cook. <laughs> so, now, when you say limited, are under ten, like roughly, what do you look at numbers wise? Oh, apparently five for dinner. Oh, wow. Um, Will, my husband, can't go tomorrow because. Uh, he works, and my cousin Carol, who is this, this lady's daughter, her husband is a phlebotomist. Oh, wow. He does like the blood, you know, blood draws. So he's working tomorrow as well. So he won't be there. So it'll be me and my aunt and my cousin and her, my cousin's two kids. So. Well, and things have changed so much. You know, we're journalists. Well, yeah, I still consider myself a journalist, even though I'm out of the day by day field. But it was funny, even back to the time when we first worked together, man, working a holiday was a commitment. I mean, you had to go to the office. I mean, that's how we did business. That was it. Mm -hmm. And I know like a lot of times we had to work the holiday for us. It's like, Hey, we got to leave the reunion early because you got to go back to Northeast Ohio where, where we worked at. And it's gotta be weird now because I know even um, in the last four or five years working from home, Literally, you could say, hey, I could still come to the reunion. Just give me a spot to whip out the laptop. I know it's not family friendly, but it's a lot better than leaving way yeah. early to take the hour or two drive back to wherever you work at. So, yeah. yeah. But, but I know, like, for your husband, yeah, he works at a physical location. So, you know, he, right. he's got to leave early for that. Yeah. And yeah. Plus he sleeps. Yeah. He, like, he's still sleeping right now. It's two, like, 2.20. And he's still asleep because he works tonight. He starts at oh yeah. He starts at eight. So oh yeah, and you, you gotta sleep for that, I Meg. Mean, I would never yeah. make it if I didn't sleep. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So it's different how things it's changed. I gotta tell you a weird story. I was gonna say this on the last podcast, but we're out of time. Um. Get this, and the Seinfeld show wasn't that great. So we'll talk Seinfeld, <laughs> but chill out if you're like, why aren't they talking about Seinfeld? Yeah. When you make inferior episodes. 
we're not going to sit here and talk for an hour about an inferior episode. Yeah. So <laughs> chill out or yeah. find some dopey Seinfeld podcast where they talk about the show for an hour and a half. We're yeah. not that. So d- deal this with is it. Not, this is not the contest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the contest. We could talk for 10 hours, but this was not yeah. the contest by far. Yeah. Um, get this. This is weird. And I'm not going to mention any names or churches, so I don't want to get anybody in trouble here. And, and hey, you cover stuff in Star Kind. Maybe you could do a story about this. Oh. Probably not. It's not that exciting. So, our family, um, aunt and uncle to me in the family, have gone to this church in Louisville for a long time. So, our family did the reunion at this church. Well, this church has this upstairs with a big kitchen, a big area where you can eat. They have a gym. So you can play volleyball or basketball. You know, very, lots of things for people to do. You're not even in the church part. It's not like you're in the sanctuary. You can just Mm -hmm. go have a lot of fun. So my aunt died probably about five, six years ago. My uncle dies earlier in the year. Apparently, it was just this understanding that we could run it forever. And we thought we would be there forever. The uncle dies. And the uncle's been in poor health for a while. So we go back to them this year and say, hey, we're ready. You know, here's the money. We're going to rent this out. Sorry, you can't. Nobody's living anymore from the family. Yeah, so we got kicked out. Really? We had to find a new place, which is kind of wild. I know every church has a different philosophy. Like some churches will rent to anybody. Some churches Hmm. will say, you got to be a member or not. But, hey, as soon as not, we were out. And we were there for 30 years. We took a year or two off. Even though the person was a member of the church who died? Yeah, yeah, they died. Wow. And, and so they died in December, and they didn't have the service until like two months ago because it was the death happened during COVID, and we were like, you know, let's yeah. hold off on that. But, yeah, very, very strange. Now, we're, we found a different church with similar facilities, but probably – 25 percent as big as the other one so and it's usually 40 50 people come it's usually a pretty big reunion so mm. we're going to get to know each other a little bit we'll be tighter we can't be yeah. as far apart so took a mask <laughs> well because oh, yeah, too, too. Yeah. oh my gosh because the flu is a problem too maybe i won't show up maybe i just stay home <laughs> I don't know. It's just rough. Yeah. yeah so that's my that's my thing and the rest of the time, we're just getting ready for Christmas, and we got some stuff at home to clean up, so should be good. I, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. There's a pretty big Ohio State-Michigan game. I'm not a big Ohio State guy, mm-hmm. but as a guy, I feel like I need to watch that somewhere. So yeah. I, I may go somewhere and watch that. Uh, stamp my man card, so I don't know. That'd be weird. <laughs> All right, so, yeah. Anything else we could talk about before we get to this crap side of the episode? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We, we got to get there somehow because I got another fun story we got to talk about afterwards. Um, yeah, so the movie. Um, War, I think I've seen this episode even before we even started talking about doing a podcast at least 500 times. It, it seems <laughs> to always come on when I'm turning on Seinfeld on TV. It's very strange. Have you seen this that often? Has it done that for you? Or is it just I don't me? think it's that many times. But Okay. Oh. Uh... You're right. It's not. It's not one of the better ones. <laughs> it's probably in the lower. How many episodes were there in that list? 179. Yeah. Like yeah. Like, I forget. And <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> it's probably in the lower 20. Okay. <laughs> um, it's just not good. See, I'm wondering. I wouldn't argue that it's a great episode. It's far from great. I'm wondering if my negative attitude for it, it's just because I've seen it a bunch of times it hasn't been that good. Like, if this was one of the samples maybe I only saw a handful of times, I don't think I would have liked it, but I think I hate it more than I've seen it a billion times. I don't know. One of the one of the things that I really caught when I was watching this episode is that this is one of the ones where you really see the age and how, oh, yeah. long, how long ago it was. I mean, oh, yeah. we, we've mentioned, you know, periodically when we've been doing these podcasts that, you know, there's like moments here and there, you know, that, um, you know, they could have sent a text or, you know, something and it would have been much easier, but this is an episode 
that there's so many different aspects of this that are yeah not you know that are really old you know yeah like definitely definitely one i mean one is the fact that jerry couldn't communicate to the people who were waiting for him that he wasn't going to be there you know and yeah you know there's a text right there um the fact that you know, I, not, you know, it might not be this way for everybody everywhere right now, but, um, and I haven't been to a movie in a long time. So to be a COVID, probably since um, right before the Oscars of 2020, I would guess. And um, that you, I don't think, I don't think there are many theaters anymore that don't tell you that you like have to pick your seats when you buy your ticket, you know, yeah. there's none. I mean, you pretty much are buying, a, buying a seat rather than, you know, just buying a ticket, you know, and you know, there's no, so you don't have to hold seats. A B it's really easy to get in and out of the aisles now because there's tons more room because of the recliner <laughs> seats. Do you have those by you? Yeah. 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 Cause I mean, that's one of the, that's one of the better things that happen with those recliner seats. There's a lot fewer seats per theater, but it's easier to get in and out. Even when you have your, you're fully reclined in your seat, there's room for somebody to walk in front. You know, there's no bumping into anybody. You're trying to get through in the dark and all that stuff. So, I mean, there's just a bunch of things here that um, show the age of this episode. Are, are you a big movie theater person? I, I know at that time that was how to watch a new movie. And I know it's different now, but like I talked to Craig or I talked to George Thomas, and they're, they're huge movie people. I mean, yeah. they were excited to get back to the theaters. I'm not. And I know some movies it's great to see with the big screen and everything. And I, I know that's better than watching it on your smaller TV. But to me, sometimes a movie theater can be a pain in the butt. And I, I'm just fine not going sometimes. I used to be a big movie theater person. Oh, yeah. Um, but I will say that I like the experience mm -hmm. of it. None of the, I would, I shouldn't say none, but the vast majority, the vast, vast majority of the movies that I see don't need to be seen on a big screen. Yeah. 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 Because I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a Star Wars person. I'm not a, um marvel person i'm not mm -hmm. you know superhero type stuff at all you know i'm not really into that at all and so it's you know my stuff is like romantic comedies don't need to be seen on a giant screen <laughs> yeah <know>? yeah <laughs> so but you know i love movie theater popcorn you know and hmm, okay you know, I love the idea of, you know, sitting in the theater and you know being in being in the crowd you know but like I said, I have not seen a movie in a movie theater since probably, I'm thinking like January of 2020, probably, maybe even, maybe even the end of 2019. I don't remember. Mm. Um, usually Will and I do, uh, my husband and I do a, um, a, a glit, a blitz, you know, of, yeah of oscar nominated movies right before the oscars you know oh yeah be as many as you can or you know package as many award nominees as you can um to know what they're to know what people are talking about and who's winning these awards and what they're for but um i haven't i haven't seen a movie i mean there's i think there's a couple movies this year that i might want to see in the theater before the um before the Oscars would come out, they mm -hmm. come out later in the year, though. Or well, it's not. I mean, it's already November, so I shouldn't say that. In a few weeks, <laughs> yeah. Say. And but it, you know, I'm I'm thinking to myself, am I gonna want to wear a mask in the theater? Because, like, I think we've talked about this before that, you know, you got the. Um, do you remember that scene in Outbreak where the guy coughs in? Oh Outbreak? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the first thing I always think of when I think of COVID, you know? Yeah. You know, everybody, all these people that complain and moan about masks and don't want to, don't think you can get sick and people are making up, making up stuff. Go see that movie. Watch that movie sometime and see the person cough in the movie theater and you tell me. 
that people aren't going to get sick, you know? <laughs> well, and I got to be careful about what I say this because I don't want to be Debbie Downer. And as soon as I say this, you know, you're going to hear the old SNL. Wah, wah. But <laughs> I got to tell you, going to, even going to shop sometimes, to walk around a store, it takes an hour. You're just like, what the? I, I wasted my time. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm a guy who likes to do the pickup order. It just saves time. And I'm like, yeah. and it's not like I'm doing so many great things every day and I need all that time back. But I'm just like, I don't want to be that guy at the movie theater. I Yeah, I'm not afraid of COVID necessarily right now. But mm-hmm. I think about what you think about. I think about, oh, I don't want to be coughed on by somebody. Yeah. Uh, the worst thing to ever happen, if I knew who that guy was, I would go apologize to him. This is before COVID. My daughter, she was freaking out. She was a, we were in a Chick-fil-A. There was a ton of people there. And my daughter sneezes in the face of a guy. Mm-hmm. And again, she's a little girl. The guy was upset, but what it wasn't like it was a girl. Now, if I see the face, I'll probably get punched. Or, but, you know, it wasn't like that. But I'm thinking it's almost not safe to be around people. And, um, you know, the day that we're recording this, there's an awful story in Virginia. Uh, six people die in the Walmart. And again, thankfully, that's random. I mean, it's not like if you go to Walmart today, that's going to happen again. But sometimes I sit there and think, I don't want to take that chance at Walmart. I mean, however we die, we're going to die at, but I don't want to die at Walmart. And I'm just like, it's a pain anymore. You know, it's not worth it. And I'm not afraid of stuff. It's more of yeah. like working from home now has gotten so nice where I'm like, man, this is kind of nice. I don't, I, I feel like you don't have to go a million places. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I've, you know, I've done a lot of my Christmas shopping already and I, most of it I've done online. Good call. It's easier. And, you know, I, I mean, I could tell you right now, um, I have not, let me think to make sure I'm not lying. Um, I think I might have been to the mall that's near me once since we moved back to um, north northern Ohio. Yeah. Since, you know, in two years, two plus years. You know, I, I just, I have no... I have no well, reason to go there, you know. But just think about this. Why live there? Okay, the winters. You get into December and January, you're getting snow most every day. Mm-hmm. And it's not a foot of snow every day, but you know, you're getting enough snow to be annoying. So you have to drive to work five days a week. And then on your off day, okay, it's time to go Christmas shopping. I'm like, I don't want to go out in the snow again. Yeah. I want to chill out. I want to be at home for a night. You know, it's just, <laughs> oh, it just stunk. But saying all that, you know, with the Seinfeld, that was the time that they lived in. <laughs> Those poor people, if you want to go see a movie, if you want to do something, you had to go out. If you, even if you stayed home, it probably wasn't, you know, what, you get videotaped to watch a home of a movie. I mean, it's so much more flexible. We have entertainment now. So yeah. they lived their life where, you know, and Jerry was doing a comedy set. You know, we know now that, you know, comedians try out their material at local comedy clubs. So Jerry's trying to pack way too much into a night. He yeah. goes, he tries to, you know, do a set uh, and then catch a movie. And then now he wants to catch a movie first and do a set. And, you, you know, okay, I'm not excited about the show, so I'm not going to sit here and talk about that conundrum. That's yeah. just the ha-ha line of the show and everything. I felt bad because I think in my worst time socially, I was kind of like this Buckles guy, the comedian. Mm. I, it was funny, but it was more sad than anything else. I don't know. Yeah. I, I wrote down in my notes, why does he hang out with the guy? Because he clearly, yeah. he clearly doesn't like him. And I thought to myself about the other guy, why doesn't he realize that Jerry doesn't like him? You know? Yeah. He's trying so hard, you know? And at one point you're like, well, maybe it's because of the him trying to get on the Tonight Show, but it's not. It's just him trying to be friends with Jerry. So, yeah, it's tough. Well, and it, it gets to the point too where it gets ridiculous. Like it's one thing if I called you fifty times, and said, oh, we need to go out for lunch or something, and you're like, yeah, yeah I just don't want to do that. I mean, it got to the point though where he was like, oh. Put my coat in your, in yeah. your closet. I mean, it got very, 
it got very strange. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, the other thing um, that got me about this episode was um, when they were all trying to get into the movie theater to share their messages that could have gone via phone. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the discrepancy between the way they were each treated when they tried to get past the ticket takers or whoever the people were who were waiting on them, you know, like George was met with like, um, no recognition by the guy, no matter yeah. how many times he talked to him. Um, Jerry walks up to the other guy and he just, he says, yeah, I need to run in for a second. And, you know, the guy's like, whatever, I don't care, you know? And Kramer too. Kramer, of course, being the one who you probably should be suspicious of the most because he's a right. nut, but um, he just gets the, he just gets the free pass, you know, and goes in and, it, it just struck me as, you know, their demeanor greeting them was different than what George's was. You know, it's a, it's a good, you know, it's a good reminder of, you know, you, you know, sugar, you know, the sugar versus the salt, you know, yeah. if you're salty to somebody, they're going to be less willing to help you versus if you're nice to them. And some people were sticklers, like the guy that gave George a hard time. He just seemed the guy that was more by the book. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Like, it was funny. Again, maybe I've seen the show 500 times, like where he goes to the girl and says, hey, the the big-headed guy with the big nostril. Yeah, yeah. it's this guy. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. when she taught. I forget what, how Elaine said it about Kramer, about the hair. Yeah. I mean, for her not to know who that was was ridiculous, you know. It, right. There's only one person that could ever come with that hair, you know. <laughs> We, I don't know if I've said this before, but we had a guy, I went to Malone in Canton, if you're from Ohio. Um, we had a basketball player. It, it was strange. He was 6'6", and he had the Kramer hair. And he was 6'6", without the Kramer hair. <laughs> and it was weird because, like, uh, we had Will Walsh, the big rival from Malone. Uh, those games, used to be, I, I don't know how intense they are now, but they, they used to be, like, like almost fights during games. Yeah. I, I know my senior year, there was like two player fights at each game when they played each other. So it used to be a whole horrific, like Duke, North Carolina type rivalry. Um, and the other fans were would yell Kramer at him, <laughs> thinking that would offend him. And, and the guy, I know the guy, was like laughing it off. Like, oh, that's well. great. You know, he I like Seinfeld. Yeah. yeah. I mean, why is Kramer a negative nickname? I don't know. I mean, I I, I know it's kind of a goofy hair. I, I never got to ask him why he has hair like that. But, man, Kramer's not a bad name at all. So, um, well, the other thing, too, and again, this is just a personal thing. The bigger the city you live in, like if you live in a Columbus or Cleveland, people are less likely to recognize somebody. I mean, if you're in a Louisville or Alliance, a small town, yeah, you might say, oh, yeah, I remember that guy with the weird hair or the weird nose or whatever. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. New York City, I mean, you're lucky. I mean, it's just people all around. You're lucky to remember anybody. Yeah. I mean, but the guy the guy is completely wrong about the fact that he had no idea who he was when he was just there, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's ridiculous, so. I didn't get as much... I I like when George is cheap. That's fun, but yeah. the this episode just didn't... I don't know, it's just a pretty standard. They were arguing back and forth about change and everything. Mm -hmm. And to your point, too, another way of saying, hey, this is old, because now with your app or something, you could easily say, okay, we're each paying six fifty. But I, I know at that time it used to be a crazy thing to try to figure out who, who pays what and everything. Mm -hmm. George is just absurd the way he does it, you know? Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> And you gotta think too. Okay, yeah, there was a time. I mean, when I lived up in the um, your area, I wasn't making much money, and it, things were expensive at the time. But there's got to come a time too where, yeah, he's worried about money, but you gotta be worried about a relationship. And the more you do that, you're just gonna yeah. piss people off. It's tough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just the argument over who pays now and who's gonna owe who money. It's just typical George, you know. Yes. So, I mean, George spent a little more time trying to find a job, you know, rather than 
arguing about who's going to pay who when, you know? <laughs> All right. Very, very cool. Um, yeah. Kind of a note to Laura. I need to move rooms, but we're, we're still talking. So hang on just a second. We're talking uh, just so you wonder why I'm going to be mobile <laughs> real quick. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was very weird. Um, I liked Kramer and I know it's a no, no in some movie theaters back then. And probably even now, the whole idea of going across the street to get food. I'm not into movie theater food as much. I mean, I, I know that you like the popcorn and that's fine. But man, now I'm not yeah. a hot dog guy either. So Papaya King doesn't sound like that exciting to me. But the, the fact that Kramer went across the street to get a hot dog, I, I'm sure it probably ticked off the movie theater. They don't like that. But I don't think that's that bad of a call. I mean, he got it in, you know, and- I had, I was like thinking he must have eaten it already, and then he pulls it out in the theater because it's so small, you know. Yeah, yeah, it, it makes it weird. I don't know. Is it that frowned on? I know you're you were used to be a big movie person. I don't Can think. So, I, I don't know because, granted, it's been a long time since. Um, it's been a long time since I've been to a movie, but. Like, I don't know that they have staff or enough staff to walk around and look at people like they used to. You remember? Like, they would always have somebody, some dude or woman walking through with a flashlight and she would look at everybody, you know? Do you remember that? Yeah. Um, I don't think they have enough people to do that now. You know, so, they might, so- but I just never notice them. But I haven't been in a long time. But, I mean, it just seemed... It's probably frowned upon. You got to really be good about um, sneaking it in. I used to like the last few times when I when we would go um, back in the day. You know, I would bring in like a bottle of water in my purse or something. You know. Oh yeah. But you know, I always brought candy there and stuff. Maybe I don't know because it's really hard to bring candy in because it shakes and makes a lot of noise. <laughs> I wonder if that should be the new thing for movie theaters. If they want to get people back, just say, "Hey, bring your food. Just don't make a mess." Yeah. Maybe we'll find you if you, you know, if yeah. your seat too greasy or whatever. But maybe, maybe that's how to get people back to the movie theater. I don't know. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm struggling here on Seinfeld a little bit. This this wasn't my my favorite episode. Um, Rochelle, Rochelle, yeah. now. I don't know. Um, it's pretty funny they all end up in the movie theater watching it. <laughs> here's the other thing, too. And it, okay, maybe I'm wrong. It's weird. Whatever the movie is that features either a attractive woman or a scene, a scene that's exciting. It's weird if guys want to see that together. <laughs> you know, it's just kind yeah. of, you don't call your guy friend and say, oh, there's this hot woman in the theater. Is this a really racy scene? I want to see it. <laughs> it's not usually for guys to go together. It just kind of makes it weird. Yeah. I don't know. I usually, it's funny when, it's funny to have this conversation because until I got married, until like I met Will and we were dating and then married. Um, I, I would go to, I loved going to movies by myself. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I did it a lot. And it was always like a really, I always had a, like a really good experience doing it, you know, cause you go, I, but you know, I had, um, I had, um, a different, you know, time frame. You know, I a lot of times I would go in the afternoon. You know, and there yeah. weren't a lot of people around. Like I can probably count on the number. I could probably count on one hand the number of times that I went to a movie by myself at night, because it yeah. was always I was always working or whatever. You know, but like, um, I so I I didn't really go with other people to that. I you know a lot. It. it <laughs> <laughs> to me, it was always a little more complicated when you had to go with right. somebody else, <laughs> yes. you know, because like I have a certain way that I want to go to a movie. Like I have like a pattern, you know, I, I, um, I like to, 
I have to go to the bathroom before the movie starts because I can't stand having yeah. to go to the bathroom during the movie, you know, because I don't know what the best time to leave is, you know. And, you know, it's just it's it's just too complicated, you know. Yeah. But um so it I'm not somebody that, you know, plans ahead to go with somebody else, but it does seem weird. I I I, I shouldn't say it's weird, but it seem it's not an experience that I've ever had where two guys. I mean, I've gone to like I've gone to, um, like I I know guy friends of mine that have gone to see like the movies that I would never see in the theater. <laughs> you know, yes. like the Star Wars and that kind of stuff. They do that, but I I don't think I've ever seen guys go. You know, because there's a cute girl in it or whatever. Because it seemed to me that it was very a, um, it seemed to be very much a, a movie that I like. It wasn't a inappropriate movie. I'm I have kids around me, so I'm being careful about the terms I yeah. use. It wasn't inappropriate, but it seemed to be one of those movies that you went just because you know a woman was partially dressed or it was good looking. Um, you know, it, it just makes it kind of hard. You know? So I don't know. Um, okay, sorry. I'm having different people coming to, up to me right now. So, um, Laura, what was your thought, if you can talk for a minute, um, what was your thought about them using Rochelle Rochelle? You know, you've talked a lot in the past. Uh, Seinfeld was famous for not using regular titles. It wasn't like they said, mm -hmm. hey, we went to see American Pie or something. They were just like, they made up movies. Uh, what did you think about Rochelle Rochelle? It's kind of funny how they used that title. Um, I, whenever I think about that title, I always think to, I always think, I think it must be ahead to um, Bette Midler when she's, um, when she's on. Um, she, you know, she's in the musical Rochelle Rochelle and she gets like a standing ovation from the, from the studio audience when she uh, sings the Rochelle Rochelle song. Um, there's a lot of, uh, it's funny that Seinfeld um, does some stuff that's like dropping names, you know, oh, of a uh, product. Can't take a um, yeah. like, um, <laughs> you know, Junior Mint and, you know, that kind of, and, you know, Kenny Rogers Chicken and, you know, those things are pretty common, but then there's like Rochelle Rochelle and there's, you know, Papaya King, I think is a real thing. Today, yeah. Mistaken. Um, but it, you know, it's the stuff, I always think of the names of stuff you okay. know, that, that come out like that in these episodes. Like to me, this episode isn't, you know, the movie, it's, um, Rochelle Rochelle, you know, or, you know, whatever. <laughs> well, I thought Rochelle Rochelle was a good choice because it was always this, like, Rochelle Rochelle, a young woman's story mm -hmm. from Milan to Melissa. And the way they <laughs> said, Rochelle Rochelle was kind of a funny way of describing it that if they said, you know, the hot girl or whatever the movie was, it, it just it kind of made it into something funnier, I guess, by, by saying Rochelle Rochelle. So it, it, it was kind of, uh, yeah, that was good. Um, yeah, what you're saying before was right too about how we approach that very differently. Like, um, I'm going to talk to you in a few minutes about um, HBO Max is free for a week on YouTube oh, TV. Really? Yeah, really? oh yeah, yeah. We, we got to stop talking about Seinfeld. Holy crap! I, yeah, we got a couple things we got to talk about that? before we're done. How do you get uh, that? All right. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. We can end <laughs> okay, the part really quick. Um, no, but it was interesting because now with HBO Max, you can see some current movies at whole. Like there's a um, – what movie was it? There's a movie that just came out that HBO has that you could like watch today if you want to. So it's very different. We're in the past. Like I think back – uh, when you and I worked together, we our copy desk would go to movie days sometimes, like in the day, mm -hmm. and that was your only chance of seeing that movie. You would either go for your copy desk or you would go on date or whatever the case might be. So, yeah, it was very different. And I don't know, I think that's kind of what drew away from Seinfeld because it, this episode is I felt like I was in a different time. And yeah. you almost got frustrated, like, oh, why don't you text each other or call each other? Well, yeah. they didn't have it that time. And I, I guess that was my frustration about the episode. I thought they tried to put way too much. 
I mean, yeah, it was funny, all the mishaps and how they just missed each other and everything. But it seemed like there was way too much thrown in at a particular time. I don't know. I, I get overwhelmed too much sometimes with some of those uh, shows. And it, I kind of felt like they tried to do way too much with, oh, we just missed each other. And, oh, look at this. Look at that. It just made it kind of tough. So I don't know. Um, I had a couple of things I wanted to talk about before we're done, but any, anything else on the Seinfeld? Like I said, I, I didn't get a ton out of it because I just did not like this particular episode. But anything else that we should mention before you move on? Um, let me look at my notes. Yeah, I I don't want to talk about it too much, but on the other hand, I just yeah. want to blow for a whole episode just because. No, we I think we could pretty much got everything. Okay. I mean, it was mo- my notes are mostly like pointing out places where, um, you know, life would be so much easier for them if they had these problems now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to go. And and the sad thing about that is, at that time. That wasn't the point because at that time everyone lived like that. So I mean, I think we're finding more enjoyment out of something because it's like thirty years later, which kind of mad, weird. So yeah, I just turned in my birthday is January fifth, and this episode first aired January sixth of nineteen ninety three. So I, I turned eighteen the day before it, hmm. it aired. Wow, it doesn't matter, but <laughs> I thought it was interesting. So I always I don't forget know. that your birthday was the same day that my mom's was. I knew yes, I yes. knew that like all the time, but I always forget it now. You know. Well, well, that that was a very tough day for both of us because one of those years we worked together it wasn't ninety three; it was ninety nine or whenever we worked there. We we had a tough night because I, with the amount of pop I've drank in my life, it's it's uh, shocking. I haven't gotten a billion kidney stones, but I did have one kidney stones, and I know you were kind of confused at first because it was my birthday that day. And I'm like, no, I'm in pain. It was tough. It, it was a it was a rough night. So, yeah, unfortunately, I think you had to come in and pinch hit. So I, I do apologize. No, I think I apologized fine. before, but <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> well, it's good. It's twenty three years better. later. If you're like, I don't forgive you, then you know that's kind of weird. It's been twenty years, <laughs> but no, I ended up in the hospital, and um, I think the day after, I had to watch. Uh, I was home all day, and. There was a game I wanted to watch. I barely got to watch it because I was in pain all day. It was it sucked. It was tough. So what's next um, on Seinfeld? And before we get to our other stuff, um, this was kind of an interesting episode. Uh, the Visa. Yeah. I was watching this the other day. I'm not ex- super excited about this one, but I'm a lot more excited about this one than I am the movie. Uh, Kramer attends a baseball fantasy camp. That one got me excited. I, I like yeah, that that's where he punches uh, Joe Pepperton, certain... right? No, Mickey Mantle. Oh, Mickey Mantle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He punches. He punches Mickey Mantle because Joe Pepitone was crowding the plate and he hit him. Yes. Yes. With the pitch. <laughs> I, I enjoyed that. Maybe it was because I was really into baseball at that time. But no, I still enjoy it. That was fun. All right, so yeah, a couple quick notes. I wanted to talk about dead celebrities uh, real quick before we end. But before we get there, yeah, YouTube TV. I'm not disappointed. YouTube TV. I'm disappointed. TV right now because the two shows I've got into watching are Quam Leap and Alaska Daily. They're doing this bit where we have fall finales. Apparently, they didn't order that many of the episodes for the upcoming year. So Quam Leap, like two weeks ago. They had like this cliffhanger, and it's not coming back until February or something. Now, granted, it's the holidays. We're gonna have our let's air Frosty and Snowman or whatever holiday show they're gonna air. I get it, but to me, it's like it's this cliffhanger. I'm like, I can't wait for four months or whatever it is. It, it's frustrating. Oh, Alaska Daily, Laura. I'm starting to get more impressed by it. It's definitely not all the President's Men or Spotlight or any of the other classic movies, but lots of references to what we're going through today. Laura, it's been nice. Um, the publisher came in the other day on one of the shows. We may have to do layoffs, and I, it, it's a scary time. I'm not put, put a light at that because we've all had to sweat through them. But it was good to see a current show address that. You know, we're not painting this rosy picture of newspapers. We're kind of saying how it is. So I don't know, Lori. You got to check it out sometime. I think you'll like it, maybe. I will sometime. I just don't know okay. when. Yes. <laughs> I'm not a Hilary Swank person. I, I I felt I had to watch one episode, but I wasn't excited. I'm. It's becoming a 
a go-to. I mean, I, I'm not watching it the same night. I don't even know what day it's on. But, like, over the weekend last weekend, I saw there was an episode I haven't seen yet. I'm like, man, I got to watch it. But what frustrates me is, okay, so Hillary Swank is investigating the deaths of, um, you know, people of color in Alaska. Very good cause, everything else. Well, there's this one guy that's been kind of after her and threatening her. Well, the ser- the show ends for a big two-month hiatus with the guy coming to the newspaper office to try to kill her. So now we have to wait for two months to figure out what happens. She's probably okay. I don't think she's going to die or something. But I don't like these couple months. I mean, it's one thing if it's the summer and you know it's a season finale and you got to wait for the next fall. This mid-season finale is just bummer. Yeah. Yeah. TV's different now than it used to be. It, yeah. Over the past couple of years, we've we've noticed, like we've talked about this before, that you know the pattern of TV has changed. There's a lot of shows that are even half year shows. Yeah. And bring like another set that comes up after that. Well, and they still cancel stuff too early, and I, I get it. It's probably easier to order ten episodes of Alaska Daily. I don't even know how the show's doing the ratings. Maybe I'm the only one watching it, so you can't order fifty episodes of a show, and if it sucks, you let go. So, I mean, I get it. It's just a little frustrating as a a viewer, I guess, of what, mm-hmm. what's happened there. Yeah. Uh, a couple notes I thought were interesting, and one to pass along. Uh, Paramount Plus. I didn't know this, but my wife was a Walmart uh, Plus subscriber. We get Paramount Plus. I need to hook that back up. It's part of our perk for being a Walmart Plus uh, deal. I I saw over the weekend Top Gun, the big magic. Yeah, I saw that's coming. Yeah, December, I guess. So, which is not far away. It's crazy how quick the year's gone. Week from today is the thirtieth of November. Well, I gotta check it out. I'm I'm probably going to be disappointed, but I guess the Frasier thing is starting to pick up steam. They said that they're probably going to film the uh, reboot in February, so maybe it'll come out mid-year. So I, I need to at least watch it. I'm not going to be happy with it, I'm sure, but I feel like I need to watch it somehow, too, so it'd be good to have Paramount+. Plus. And then, two, um, this will probably be released after Black Friday, but there still may be some deals available. There are a lot of Black Friday uh, deals for some of these um, – services. Um, my wife wants Hulu so she can catch up on um, The Handmaid's Tale. I saw a deal where it was like a dollar ninety nine for a year or a, per month for a year. Oh, that's going to say. Is about, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but there's similar deals out there. I think HBO you can get for two bucks a month for three months or something. It's very interesting. And speaking of HBO, before we get to the other story we want to talk about, yeah, I noticed on YouTube TV they are giving you a preview of HBO and Showtime to YouTube subscribers until the 29th. So, Lori, you got six days left. I, as you've been talking, I've been uh, going through HBO Max. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> and I found one thing that I definitely am going to watch probably tonight. Oh, um, okay. I never saw the last season of Veep. So oh, yeah. I'm definitely watch that. I have it on okay. my screen right now. Season seven, episode one. <laughs> so it'll be. I'll be watching that shortly. I haven't always been the Veep. The last time we did that, the Lakers show, the Rise and Fall of the Lakers, it was very mm-hmm. trashy. It, it made me laugh. Yeah. I, I watched that really quick because I had a day left. I got to tell you, I've been looking for the HBO and Showtime. Nothing jumps out. I'm sure I'll end up watching something, yeah. but there's nothing to say, oh, my gosh, Laura, I got to watch this right away. I have Showtime. I really should watch Showtime more than I do. Mm-hmm. Um, we have it as part of a um, – a package. I forget which package. It might be uh, as part of Paramount Plus. Okay. I think I can't remember, but um, I I kept I I actually subscribed to I stream I subscribe subscribe to the screaming screaming screen <laughs> streaming of uh, Showtime for a long time because I watched uh, Ray Donovan and I hmm. watched. I mean, I watched it through like a bunch of different times and then I stuck around for the movie, you know, the final movie of it. And I'm glad I did because it, it's a good show and I love Lee F. Shriver. So. Okay. 
Yeah, Craig will defend HBO to the death. I I was excited about Conan O'Brien. He supposedly is getting an HBO show sometime. And I, he gave an update a few months back. I don't know where that's at. I mean, I'll probably be more into getting HBO once Conan officially goes on there. And I'm not even sure what he's doing on there. It's not going to be a nightly talk show. It could be a yeah. comedy special from time to time. Who knows? Um, yeah, so, yeah, but that's out there. I mean, hey, it's a holiday week. You might need something to watch. Go for it. I mean, yeah, definitely. Lord's like, I know Lord's in tonight. I'll put that so. I'm watching, Lord's, I'm watching Veep tonight. <laughs> yeah, Lord's gonna finish up the paper or paperwork and probably watch Veep at the same time. So, yeah, I, I've told Craig this the one thing about my new job, I used to be able to stream seasons of like the Showtime, the Lakers. Mm-hmm. One, I was working as a producer, now I'm a writer, I can't do that anymore. I, I'm lucky. Yeah. I'll even put uh, music or a podcast on in the background, but yeah. the podcast, I, I don't hear half of what's being said. Sometimes I'll laugh if I hear something fun, but yeah, it's, it's just a totally different vibe, which I'm sure it's true for a lot of reporters you work with too. They probably can't stream whole seasons of stuff as they're writing stories. So mm-hmm. I don't know. There's probably some reporters out there that do stream seasons, but that's another story for another I'm day. Sure. Yeah. Yes. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Some reporters that we both have worked with that maybe write a story a week. That's what they're doing, but hey, you never know. All, all right, I wanted to bring up this last story because I don't know. I thought this was interesting, and sorry, I lost the tab. I was going to bring it up on. Um, there's people out there. Um, obviously, um, celebrities once they die, you know, they could still make money off what they do. Mm-hmm. And let me bring up a story I sent you. I thought this was kind of fascinating. Uh, Forbes, a couple weeks back, uh, they released their list of the highest paid dead celebrities of 2022. And I just want to go through them. I thought this was kind of interesting. Uh, J.R. Tolkien. Now, am I reading this right, Laura? Does this mean his estate made $500 million this year? Or is this throughout his life? Or his afterlife? It's a good question. Um, let me see. I'll no, I, I think it's this year. Yeah, it must uh, be. Yeah, because there's a video game uh, company, Embracer. Uh, they uh, bought Middle Earth Enterprises. And one of the things owned by Middle Earth Enterprises was the works of J.R. Tolkien. Uh, they spent $500 million. So, wow. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's the thing. It's going to be shared with a bunch of companies that own his intellectual property. So it's not necessarily like the Tolkien family is going to get a ton of this money, but still, mm-hmm. $500 million. And the guy died in 73. I mean, the guy died before I was born, you know. Kind of nuts. Yeah. So, One of the more interesting things on here is number nine. Is okay. The, the guy who was the drummer for Toto, the band Toto. Yeah. Uh, J- Jeff Rocaro, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, they sold his publishing rights, or uh, in 2020, for 25 million dollars. <laughs> oh wow! And probably 24 million nine hundred ninety nine thousand is the uh, is the is the song uh, Africa that he wrote. Yeah. But number 10 is Charles Schultz. Yeah. And well, that's oh. what I wanted to talk about because when I was working in Willoughby still, mm-hmm. Will, um, in Willoughby's coverage area is um, Lakeland Community College. Yeah. And they started having um, like a, com- a comic symposium there every year um and included in it was a was a contest for like would-be um comic designers or artists however you want to call them um and i was a judge one year it was very hard um (laughs) but one of the more interesting parts of that in my opinion was they had a seminar um they had a bunch of like people come in and talk and one of the people they had come in was the guy one of the guys who was involved in the charles schultz like catalog basically of all his stuff 
and he talked about at the time. Now this was, this had to be like 2010, maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. he talked about how he had recently, he had just recently died. Well, he died in tw in 2000, so it, might, it was probably a little before 2010. But he talked. The guy talked about how how um, how much um, care they took to protect the copyrights of everything. Yeah, of Charles Schultz stuff, and that you know, if you wanted to put out a product that had one of the characters on it that you had to like go through like all of this permission stuff that you had to get permission for it. And I'm going to say they don't do that anymore <laughs> because I notice that peanuts these days is everywhere and yeah. all this weird stuff. So clearly they're not doing a very good job of protecting his, his name and his stuff anymore. Um, like, yeah, for instance, yesterday I, I was on my way back to work after I had a, a doctor thing and I stopped at TJ Maxx in Alliance. And one of the things I saw while I was there was, and I almost bought it actually, was a set of, it was an advent calendar for, um, it was a peanuts advent calendar. It had, it was a 12 day advent calendar. And every day was a different pair of socks with peanut, mm. char peanut characters on it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, what is going on at Peanuts yeah. at World Headquarters? You know, I mean, because everywhere you go now, you see peanuts on something and something weird, you know, like um, TJ Maxx has like endless numbers of like cups and drink and mugs and like travel mugs and and stuff on it and i'm a huge peanuts fan but i gotta say the more i see it the more i think it's really a shame that they have taken his his stuff and, and not done a better job of protecting it well and i kind of wonder too like what makes me sad looking at this whole list is and i can see both sides of the argument like this, these people aren't owned by their families anymore. Like David Bowie's music, for example, is owned by companies. So when you see like David Bowie got 250 million, well, it's not like that's going to his family, it's going more toward whatever company owns his stuff, right? I'm, I'm hoping his family gets some of it, but maybe the family already. Well, I'm sure David Bowie sold the rights to his music when he was performing, but uh, like I kind of wonder. It's an interesting list, but it makes me depressed because more I read it, it's like, oh, one company paid millions to another company. You know, it's not like, you know, David Bowie's, you know, family is getting <laughs> paid from this or anything else like that. Right. Um, but, you know, I kind of wondered too, like the Charles Schultz thing, I thought was interesting. Um, I, I've done stories down here in Columbus. Ohio State has a comic museum there. And I'm not sure how big – it's Billy Ireland, I think, or some some guy. I'm, I don't even know who the name is, so I'm not sure how big of a name he is in the whole comic industry. But they have a um, a friendship with Charles Schultz. His family has donated a bunch of real nice stuff to the museum where they probably could have gotten a ton if they just tried to sell it. So maybe they have enough money. They're like, hey, we don't need more. But it's just kind of interesting to see what happened there. Yeah, they know um, Calvin the Hobbs. I used to love Calvin the Hobbs as a kid. And the guy's a reckless. He, he's up in the Northeast Ohio area, too. I'm not sure if he's still around or not. But, you know, they got a bunch of stuff from him, too. It was kind of interesting. So, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. so it's an interesting list. But the more I look at it, I kind of get depressed because all this is, is like, streaming deals or other stuff like that. Like, um, the Beatles are on there because uh, to get back Disney Plus documentary, uh, there was some money made from that, you know. So, I don't know. Uh, very interesting. Um, but uh, and it's also depressing, too. I keep forgetting Kobe Bryant's dead. And yeah. you know, he faced number two, and it's it's weird. Um, he tragically died. One of the most uncomfortable ago. parts of that list was when they got to Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> they put underneath the person's yes. name yes. in death date, they put like how they died. 
And yeah, homicide. I mean, it was just like overdose homicide. Yeah. <laughs> Did they have to get that specific. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it was officially the homicide, right? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess you have to say it. But I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Very strange stuff. So, all right. Um. Yeah. Let me. Um, promo a couple things. Very weird week since it's before Thanksgiving. We're kind of recording a bunch of stuff early. Um, talked to Joe Frost. We talked about the Steelers. The Steelers lost again. Strange to talk about a losing team, but we're here for the ride. So uh, hear about the loss to the Bengals. Uh, what else did we talk about? Oh, oh, Ohio was interesting more. You might be interested in this. The House of Blues up in your neck of the woods, up in Cleveland, mm-hmm. they're doing a Shrek rave. Coming up really? in March. Huh. Yeah, we have lots of questions. Is it legal? I mean, I, I'm sure they're not paying royalties to uh, you know, DreamWorks or whoever owns Shrek right now for it. But it's very adult-oriented. Uh, we looked at a video from a Shrek rave. Lots of dancing, lots of beer, lots of <laughs> women in <laughs> states of undress on there, too. So, yeah, I wouldn't bring, don't bring your kids to the Shrek rave. But <laughs> I thought that was good. You never want to think about it, 27 bucks to go. Wow, and it really? pretty much is a party. I mean, yeah, hey, if you like raves or like parties, it's good, but you're not spending 27 bucks to see a popular DJ or see a band you like or something. It's 27 bucks to, and I'm sure if you buy beer there, the beer is going to be costly too. It's not like you get free beer if you <laughs> pay 27 bucks. So uh, we talked about that. And then um, Peter, um, I think I'm talking to him tonight. Um, we're supposed to talk tonight about football, uh, big Ohio State Michigan game. Uh, this weekend and all the stuff happening in the NFL, I guess. So, and then they Craig's also had, they also had the list of uh, Hall of Fame finalists that came out this week. Yes, I'm seeing a lot of tweets from Peter about that, so I'm sure that's going to come up tonight. So. Yeah, it's interesting because um, the big the big thing for people in like Northeast Ohio is um, there's a Browns player on there first. First year of eligibility and first he's a finalist. So Joe, uh, Joe Thomas. Yeah. And he, it wouldn't be a shock if he made it, right? No, probably not. But I mean, if it happens, it, it'll it be a big deal. You know, yeah. I mean, I, this is a little bit inside baseball and probably inappropriate, but I don't care. First um, time. By. <laughs> no, but like, I mean, every year, you know, they're, you know, we, we in like the newspaper, you know, in Canton, we, there's a lot of, you know, talk about, you know, how many people are going to come in for, um, for the different players, you know, and oh, yeah. like, for years, the big thing everybody was waiting for was when Brett Favre went in, mm-hmm. you know, and then a couple of, was it last year or whenever it was, um, when, uh, Tom Brady, retired we were all like okay here the clock starts now and then he of course goes back to play you know right. five years of eligibility after you after you're done and you know so the clock has been running where joe thomas you know so if he gets it on the first ballot i mean he'll bring like a huge crowd i mean because it, it'll all be local you know so I, I keep telling peter like the old public relations saying is there's no news is bad there's no Oh, I'm getting it wrong. There's nothing like bad news. Like, so I, I, that's nothing not like what bad said. publicity. Yeah, no publicity yeah. is bad. Yeah, yeah. And the thought behind that is okay. Yeah, you don't want anything the media to say anything bad about your company, but at least they're talking about your company or a thing. Mm-hmm. I told Peter, and I'm saying this half king because I've lived in Camp long enough where I know the city would burn down. Time to bring Art Medell in. If for no other reason, if he's a Hall of Famer or not. You'll get attention. I mean, the sports world will talk about the Hall of Fame so much if they brought Art Modell in. Yeah. Right. It'd become I mean, a big I, news. More I, clicks. Yeah. You know, it, it's a, you know, that Art Modell thing. You mentioned Art Modell's name and you're like, whoa. Yeah. It, 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 Peter got scared. And Peter's new to yeah. here, too. He knows. She's like, why are you talking about this? You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, as a, I'm a Browns fan. Um, and, you know, as a Browns fan, um, there's a whole, like, I would say out of like a hundred percent of my view on Art Modell getting into the Hall of Fame, um, I would probably like 75% no, but 
you know, the other part of me is yes, because look what he did to the, look what he helped do for the game. You know, the game was not what it is now before the TV contracts, you know, so, you know, he, he did do a lot, but I mean, I'll never forget the fact that he stole the team and took it, you know, away, you know, here's my conspiracy theory. And I got in trouble. I hate even saying this to you because, you know, you're just an editor down there. Bob Stewart, he was like a longtime sports editor at the repository where you're at. Um, he, apparently he was – I hope he was telling the truth, but I, I think he was. He was one of the first board members or when the, they first started having the whole thing. He's a, he was an old guy. He passed. Yeah. He's since passed. So he has all these fond stories about the whole thing. And I told him, I said – you got to pick more people. Like, to me, the Hall of Fame's great. I love it. That's in Canton. I think it's fantastic. I think the Hall of Fame needs to look at itself as a public relations thing, as in saying, yeah, you don't want to induct people who are horrible football players. I understand that. But some of these controversial people, bring them in, if no other reason, to get more attention to the Hall of Fame. You know what I mean? And I like you said, I think you can make an argument for Art Modell. Yeah, he made a swarmy move by moving the Browns out of Cleveland. But, you know, he was one of the first TV people that really – and really, if, if you didn't have a TV deal, what is NFL now? NFL so popular because of their TV deals and everything else. So I don't know. I, I always think about that would be fun. So You know, and, you know, one thing about – I'll say one thing about that, that it's an argument that a lot of people probably don't think about. But, yeah, you know, the Hall of Fame – is what it is right now because of TV. Oh yeah. You know, because it used to be the Hall of Fame used to be on a Saturday afternoon with folding chairs yeah. and people sitting on the steps going into the Hall of Fame with their and they would carry their bust inside. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then it became part of a TV deal and it grew and grew and grew and now it's like a whole week of activities for everyone for men for women for kids you know it's a it's a big thing and you know so on some level while um art model is not he's persona non grata still in cleveland right. you know the guy with the TV deal, TV thing, you know, still would deserve to be in, you know? And look at yeah. what comes around goes around. Like for one time, I'm like the Swarmy Steelers fans. It's all the Browns stink. Now, now my team stinks. So it happens. You know, it comes in cycles. Sometimes your team's good. Sometimes your team's bad. I think about Baltimore. You know, Baltimore got their team ripped away from them overnight. Okay, yeah, a little Swarmy how Baltimore did it. But, you know, hey – they were on both sides of the issue. I remember covering – it was the Hall of Fame right after the Browns moved, and uh, Paul Tagliabue was the commissioner. I was in a gaggle of people who were interviewing him. He mm -hmm. got pissed because he was there for the Hall of Fame, and 9 mm -hmm. episodes of the questions were, oh, when do you bring the Browns back? When do you bring the Browns back? He's like, oh, okay, they just moved. Let me figure this out. I don't know what's going on. Uh, but, you know, Cleveland really pushed for that team back. I'm sure there were some other cities when they got their team that probably were mad saying, hey, this is our chance to get an expansion team. I'm not folding Cleveland at all. I know they went for hell. It's fine. You know, yeah. they got their team back. Everything's good. But it goes both ways. And I, I guess what I'm saying is, and I say this half jokingly, I'm not really saying it should happen because of this, but like the Hall of Fame, I'm a Steelers fan. When the Steelers get somebody inducted, I suddenly get a bunch of marketing emails. Hey, you should come, you know, because you got Steeler in there. Or when the Steelers play in the game, I get marketing emails. And, you know, what better way of doing that, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, and you're right. If Art Modell goes in, there's going to be a, a bunch of controversy too. But, you know, look at what we do in PR and media. Sometimes that controversy helps, you know, get more attention. I, I remember talking to a sports editor repository, and he, he said it. He even said this on the podcast. It helps when you have a Brett Favre going to Hall of Fame, not just for a Hall of Fame, but the number of people who click. It helps when Peyton Manning goes in. When you have a year where you don't recognize that many players, it's not mm -hmm. as big of a draw as when big players or controversial figures go in. So very good. So, yeah, so um, I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about Hall of Fame a little bit with Peter tonight. Um, and then, yeah, we have our thing. And then um, 
Craig sent me a message. He's in Nashville. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it today, but she's at the office. Uh, the Menu. Uh, have you heard of that movie, Laura? Yes. I actually want to see that movie. Okay. Is well, it a horror movie? I can't tell. It looks a little scary. I, I've seen yeah. it in a trailer, but I, haven't, I don't know too much about it. Well, Bob Garver, one of the reviewers Craig talks about, he just recorded a, a podcast from this morning. And this guy is anti-everything. He loves movies, but he hates all the movies he reviews. He said Bob Garver loved The Menu. So, man, maybe that's Oscar buzz oh, now. Wow. The, the guy who hates every movie who loved The Menu. So, who knows? <laughs> all right. Anything going on? Uh, Laura is one of the others that a, the Sarkin paper. We could say it. The repository. Please support local journalism. If you've been yes. following um, journalism news, it has been a great time. For journalism, and even in the field that I've come into in covering public relations and social media, layoffs all over the place. Um, Twitter, now I know that's partly because their CEO is kind of weird, but um, you know, even Meta with Facebook and Amazon now has layoffs and everything. Support your local places. I know uh, we're kind of on the edge of a recession. I know when that happens, everyone's going to be careful about the money they spend. But if there's something you like out there, please support it uh, because. There's no guarantee these places are around forever. And just, you know, support it. Um, you, you know, lots of good subscription deals, right, Laura? There's still probably some great rates on repository. Yeah. And, and you might sit there and say, hey, this is a Seinfeld podcast. I'm nowhere near Canton. Well, if you'd like the Hall of Fame or, you know, great place to subscribe to for Hall of Fame coverage, you know. So lots of good stuff you can get there, too. So. All right, well, what, anything coming up in cantrep.com that should we, we should look for? Um, yeah, we have our usual Thanksgiving-type stories coming mm -hmm. over the next couple of days. Um, we're, you know, we're getting into, uh, we're, we're approaching the time where our reporters are going to start working on, uh, like, year review-type stuff. We're catching up with people from stories that we've written about all year. Um, like I'm in a line in the Alliance area and a couple of mine are, um, we had two people injured very badly in different, different circumstances. One was in a shooting where a guy is charged with attempted murder and the guy is doing really poorly. So we're going to catch up with him and his family. Okay. Um, it's like six months later, you know, and he's still mm -hmm. really not doing well. And then we're going to catch up with a girl who um, was injured in really badly, a high school student in a car wreck late at night, one night in the dark. Um, she lives out in, you know, the areas where, you know, you're not on major highways, you're on country roads and there's not a lot of light and, you know, people drive really fast and, <laughs> So she was hurt pretty badly. So we're going to catch up with her right at, right before the end of the year. See how she's doing. She went back to school. So she's doing much better now. And even if you're out there saying, well, maybe you got me a little bit in the Hall of Fame. I live in Utah or something. I, I'm, I'm not close enough to know about these other stories. I can't interrupt the subscription. It helps get you some more access to USA Today, too. So Yes. And obviously, if you're anywhere in the country or the world, USA Today should matter to you. So, yeah, yeah lo lo lots of great ways of connecting there, too. So, yeah. all right. Well, I think we've been through everything. I mean, we always can talk longer <laughs> about stuff, but I think we've been for everything. So, for Laura, this is Chris. Thanks for checking our Seinfeld podcast. And again, I know you're out there going, you probably talked for Seinfeld for about 15 minutes of the thing. Hey, there's lots of other fun stuff going on, and we don't have to talk about Seinfeld the whole time. Hopefully, <laughs> you enjoy all the other crap we talk about. Uh, but for Laura, this is Chris, and uh, hopefully, we'll get Craig back next week. Have a great day, everybody. Hi, I'm Jennifer Mooney. Welcome to what is our new Hope Interrupted podcast based on the work from our book, Hope Interrupted, that I co-authored with my good friend, Byron McCauley. Hey, Jennifer. You know, I'm looking forward to this podcast as much as I was look, looking forward to writing this book with you. We hope to interview some uh, high impact folks as well as have a little fun. We're going to cover stories of hope to learn more about our podcast and our book, please visit www.hopeinterrupted.com.